Well, good evening. It's Wednesday, June the 10th. This summer is well into its season. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we will continue to post these messages online, uh, both by Facebook and YouTube, even as this coming Sunday, uh, June 14th. We will open for the morning service only at this point, and that will be at 10 o'clock. Again, June 14th, 10 o'clock. That's the same time for Spanish as well as for English. And again, right now, just the Sunday morning is all we feel like we can do um, uh, with all the cleaning and sanitation and disinfecting that has to go on uh, previous to having a service. Again, let me remind you, of course, on Saturday morning at uh, 10 o'clock, we need all the folks that were not only here for uh, the training last Saturday to clean, disinfect, and sanitize, but also others, of course, who are willing to learn, realizing you need to try to watch that video if you can on uh, YouTube and contact Kelly for that, uh, but especially learn how to properly clean, sanitize, and disinfect so folks can feel safe in coming in. And then Sunday morning, We'll be reading, meeting with our greeters, ushers, parking lot, guest services folks at 9 to make sure we're ready for everybody at 10 o'clock. Also, a letter today uh, has gone out with some other instructions about continuing to park in every other place, uh, make the entrance either to the English or Spanish to get your temperature checked, make sure you have a mask on, make sure you maintain the six-foot social distancing, and we'll have some other instructions, of course, as well. So we thank you for that. Again, if you're a senior and you have some underlying health conditions and you don't feel comfortable coming back yet, we understand. We do. My mom's in that position. My mom's in that place. I'm informing her, but when she wants to come back, that has to be up to her, and she's 90 years old. Take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. <clears throat> we have been looking at this chapter starting last Sunday. Uh, to try to help us to be in the right spirit and the right attitude as we come back together. Verse 8 has these four words at the end of verse 8. It says, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. Every person, saved or lost, belongs to God. Now, I'm not saying every person is a child of God. Oh, you have to be saved first. You have to be born again. But... Because our souls belong to God, then every person belongs to God. We are the Lord's. So far in this chapter, we've been warned uh, because we're responsible for the weaker or the feeble brothers and sisters in Christ, those that maybe aren't healthy, either physically, <clears throat> of course, or spiritually. Then we've also seen that we are responsible <clears throat> individually for both our time as well as for our life. We're responsible for our time and for our life. We each are the Lord's and we're also responsible then for one another, especially in a family or especially in a church situation. Today I wanna to carry that a step further in the subject of we are the Lord's. And that truth is that we are responsible to the Lord for not judging, especially other Christians. We're not responsible to judge other Christians. Other believers belong to the Lord and God is their judge. Other believers belong to the Lord and God is their judge. Doesn't mean we shouldn't show discernment or discretion or even evaluation, but Judging means we are forcing our opinion on other individuals and determining for them what is right or wrong. That's not our place. Oh, we have certain responsibilities as parents. We have certain responsibilities, of course, um, and, and other roles, say, as employees and employers. I understand all that. But judging is the step that God does not want us to go into. So listen, as we uh, are so quick, so quickly are uh, willing to judge others without really knowing the whole matter, the whole situation. 
Look at verse 10, and 10, 11, 12, and 13 first. We are all responsible to the Lord for not judging others as a Christian. We are all responsible. And it's hard. Man, it's hard. Listen, I can find fault with you much easier than I can find fault with me. We are all responsible to the Lord for not judging others as a Christian. Verse 10, why, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion of fall in his brother's way. Now, what does it mean to judge? To judge means to put our stamp of approval or disapproval on somebody else's actions. It means that we are showing preferential treatment of our opinion being more important than somebody else's opinion. It means to, to try to determine for someone else what is right or wrong for their life. Uh, to judge means that we set ourselves up as their ruler. We set ourselves up as their governor. And during the last uh, three months, during this pandemic, I know there's a lot of a different opinions as to different governors and so forth trying to decide whether they use too much authority or not authority, not enough and so forth and in the lockdowns and so on. But I, I'm not your ruler. I'm your pastor. I'm glad I'm not your ruler. I would not want to have to make the decisions that some of the governors and president and others made had to make. I would not want to make those decisions. I'm not your Lord. God is your Lord. To be a human judge, I've thought, thought about that oftentimes. I've been in the courtroom a few times on different occasions, and I would not want the responsibility of that judge. That judge, in essence, many times holds the future of that person in their hands. God has not set us up as judges of one another. I don't find anywhere in Scripture that says, I'm to judge you, you're to judge me, we're to judge them. God does not set us up as judges of one another. That's his assignment. <laughs> He's got that job squared away. Why are we so quick to judge others? Verse 10, but why dost thou judge thy brother? A brother could imply a physical brother, or of course, probably in this case here, a, a brother or sister in Christ. We're to, we are so quick to judge others ahead of ourselves. Again, as I said a moment ago, I can see your faults much easier than I can see mine. Instead of praying for one another first, we oftentimes judge them first. Instead of giving our brothers and sisters room to grow, we often sometimes hurt them. We hurt their growth by sometimes even offending them over matters that, quite honestly, are none of our business. Instead of showing a Christ-like love to our brothers and sisters, we often show our criticism and the attitude of a Pharisee or of a hypocrite. Remember, none of us are what we could be. None of us are what we should be. But that gives us more reason to withhold harsh judgment of others. Man, it's so easy to judge others. Why are we so quick to despise others? What does that mean? <clears throat> Verse 10, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? To set it not means I count you as less than me or I despise you as nothing. It's like walking up to a piece of garbage on the ground and just either kicking it to the side or just avoiding it altogether. Why is it that we think so little of other people that we would be critical and judgmental of them without knowing the whole story? Before you criticize someone for the clothes they wear, you better make sure that's not the only clothes they have to wear. 
Philippians 2, 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. I remember several years ago, there was a man in one of our ministries, and he would, he would, he came to me complaining about some of the jewelry that some of our ladies were wearing, and he just felt that was totally wrong and wanted me to go to her or her and her husband and tell them they shouldn't wear that jewelry. I said, that's none of your business. That's her husband's business. As long as it's not immodest, leave it alone. Don't be judgmental. We'll all be judged by the same Lord one day. Look at the other person and say, you are better than me. You ever tried that? You are more valuable to God than me. You're better than me. That's not how we usually do it. We're all judged by the same Lord one day, verse 10 again, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All means all. Now this means all believers because this is the judgment seat of Christ. There's another great white throne judgment for those that are lost, but we'll all be judged by the same judge, whether it's at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. To stand doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be upright, but means we're going to be presented before the judge and we're going to see him and he's going to see us and we're going to be questioned. The judgment seat is a platform or a, a raised official seat of judgment. It's the seat of the living God. Don't tell me we'll be standing, we'll be kneeling, maybe even flat on our face. We'll all be judged by the same Lord one day, but our defense attorney is also the same judge, the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll all be judged by the same Lord one day, and we'll all, we will all bow to the same Lord one day. Verse 11, as I live, I'm sorry, for, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. That's from Isaiah 45, verse 23. Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. We will all be judged on our knees. We will all humbly bow before Almighty God. Now, I have to be quite frank with you. Uh, it's a little harder to bow on my knees today than it used to be. But one day, we'll all bow in the face of God. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Judge of Judges. Verse 12 gives, tells us, we'll all give an account to the same Lord. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. What does that mean? What does it mean to give account? It means to give an explanation. You're, maybe you were called into the principal's office when you were in school and, and you were told to give an account, give an explanation for your actions or your words. We're all going to give an account for our actions and for our words, but it'll be of our own actions and words, not of others. I will not directly give an account for your life. And you will not directly give an account to God for my life. Boy, aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad of that? Since we're not going to give an account for each other, then we have really no right to judge one another. Verse 13 says, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. To not judge one another anymore implies that we have been judging. And quite honestly, we often do. But instead, we're to judge this. Instead, make your life's purpose this. That whether anyone is putting a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in the way. Now, what's a stumbling block? It's an obstacle that strikes the foot and causes the person to fall. 
In our parking lot, we have concrete bumpers. They have to be there. Some are, most of them are painted, but some newer ones may not. But those bumpers have to be there to stop the car from going too far, maybe hitting a wall or something else. But those bumpers become stumbling blocks sometimes. I remember one time watching my dad from a distance. I was too far away to warn him or catch him, but I remember my dad falling on one of those concrete bumpers, hitting his head. Sadly, sometimes other Christians put stumbling blocks in the way of other Christians. Sometimes even Christians snicker or maybe even enjoy seeing someone struggle or fall because it makes them feel good about themselves. It becomes a joke. Listen, if you notice someone walking towards a trap or a stumbling block, what should, what should you do? Prayerfully approach them, prayerfully help them, humbly ask them, humbly warn them instead of judging them. And then in verse 14, we see, I know and am persuaded by the Lord that there's nothing unclean of itself. Now that's, on the surface, that's a little bit of a challenging phrase. Nothing is unclean of itself. This table, this room, these buildings, money itself is neither clean or unclean. It's what it's used for. Now, I realize Saturday, we're going to be coming to clean and sanitize and disinfect. That's not what I'm talking about. The word unclean means common or it means defiled. To a Jew, to eat bacon and eggs was a sin, the bacon part, because a Jew would not eat pig under the law. Now, I like ham and eggs. I like bacon and eggs once in a while or an omelet and so forth, but... Uh, Peter had to be taught this lesson. One day, he had a dream. And in that dream, the Lord had to teach him that uh, people like the Gentiles, which the Jews called dogs, and you may like dogs, but that was a derogatory term. The Lord had to teach Peter, hey, Gentiles are not unclean. God, God does not consider a person's ethnic background. God does not consider a person's skin color. He only considers one thing, their soul. No one is unclean in and of themselves. Nothing is unclean of itself. The last part of the verse, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Now again, this is not a universal phrase. Please don't misunderstand the context. The context is again about food. But anyone that counts anything to be unclean to him, it is unclean. For example, if you consider a certain food unclean or defiled, for you, that's fine. But don't demand that someone else take the same position. For example, you may be a vegetarian. And that's fine. You may even go farther and be a vegan. That's fine. But if that's your position, don't try to force that on someone else. I like tacos. I like a good hamburger once in a while. Don't force your position, especially here about meat and other things that may pertain to that. You understand? Other things that don't matter in that are, other things that are not clearly mentioned in Scripture. In other words, anyone that counts anything to be unclean to them, it's unclean. But don't force that on someone else. Please, please, don't forget, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. We have so much, so much to keep working on our own life. God's helping me to be what I need to be. I need to concentrate more on myself and asking God to clean up my life and asking the judge to help me rather than me becoming your judge or you 
becoming someone else's judge. Don't be concentrating on others until your life is where it ought to be. And even then, when you think it's where it ought to be, there's still room to grow. There's still room to grow. We are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. I'm looking forward to seeing you eyeball to eyeball, not necessarily face to face, but eyeball to eyeball this coming Sunday. Uh, this will be a first for us in three months. Um, I've continued to preach to you by uh, Facebook and YouTube with only one exception when Evangelist Tim Schmidt was here. And I'm glad for those of you and new folks who listened in. We're grateful for that. But there's nothing like being together. So please, please, please remember when you drive in the parking lot, you'll be given an envelope with some instructions. You'll be given an envelope with the songs for the day. And uh, if you are part of the Spanish ministry, please park over by the Spanish, especially if you're going to stay in your car, because we will be able to broadcast uh, to the radio. It'll be a different frequency. And again, that'll be on the piece of paper. Uh, English, go straight to the sanctuary. Spanish to the North or Spanish Auditorium. You'll be given instructions again there. <clears throat> You'll be, your temperature will be taken. You'll be given a mask if you don't have one. And uh, you will be uh, lined up six feet apart. We will likely sing songs outside for a while. Um, the reason is, is because there are some indications that singing helps to spread the germs, etc. So we're going to stay outside for a little bit, six feet apart. Ricky will lead songs in the Spanish. Jeff will lead songs in the English. And then we will go inside of our separate buildings. And the chairs will be set up in groups uh, of numbers of two, three, four, maybe a couple of them are five if you need to. But we can only fit 75 <coughs> in the sanctuary. 32 in the North or Spanish auditorium. <clears throat> and when we reach that capacity, we'll have an overflow in the educational wing, which will be piped by uh, Facebook Live. But again, if you come and you want to stay in the car uh, for either English or Spanish, uh, you'll be able to do that. And uh, for the Spanish, that'll be a different station and that'll all be on that sheet. Looking forward to a wonderful Lord's Day. Thank you again to those who contribute financially, uh, those that are dropping off their tithes, those that are sending it in or giving online. Um, the church is able to move forward, and we appreciate that. We hope to have a report on the sign again soon and what God uh, is doing there and what we still need to get that taken care of by the 1st of July also. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, again, uh, cleaners, those that can clean, come Saturday at 10. Ushers, greeters, 9 o'clock Sunday morning. Let's have a wonderful Lord's Day. Oh, one other thing, excuse me. On Sunday night at 6, uh, I'm asking all of the Family Bible Time teachers to meet me in the Filipino classroom. So that will need to be cleaned, of course, Saturday as well to make sure that we can meet there on Sunday night at 6 and how to discuss how we can move forward in our family Bible time. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for blessing us. Thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, just again, meet with us. Thank you, Lord, for each one that was able to tune in tonight. Lord, we're going to have to refrain from hugging and we're going to have to refrain from shaking hands. But Lord, it's going to be special being back together again. Help us all to do what we need to do, not just at church, but in our communities. Lord, help us not to drop the ball on what we need to be doing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.